Hi, I'm Phil Zenner, and we're here at uh, my bird show called Birds Up Close. This show is opening up here uh, at UECA this coming Friday night, January 6th, 2017. And there are those of you who can't be here for the show, so I thought I'd give you just a taste of it here. If you want to see the actual birds uh, in more detail, you can go online and catch them at sachiart.com. That's S-A-A-T-C-H-I art, one word, dot com, slash Phil Zenner, Z-E-N-N-E-R. But for right now, I just want to give you a taste of the show. Um, people see birds every day for one reason or another. You might see one or two birds and from a distance and uh, not kind of be interested in it, but have other things on your mind. And what I really enjoy is giving people totally new perspectives on things they see all the time. So they see birds at a distance. Now I want to see, I want to let you see them up close, not just the birds in your face, that's part of it, but also some of the behaviors, uh, some of the strange things that they do and interesting um, body language they have that you may not be close enough or patient enough to see in your daily life. And so we're gonna go around uh, and take a look at some of these birds up close. Let's start here with the Guaira Cuckoo. This is a bird with some attitude as you can see and he's calling out here. Uh, this bird is actually infamous as a nest pirate. He will uh, uh, take over other birds nests and even lay eggs in them and expect them to raise them. What kind of an attitude is that? Amazing. Let's go over here to the Scarlet Ibis. This is one of 27 different Ibis species. And of course, what stands out about them is that incredible orange, red, luminescent color that he has, which is unique in the Ibis family. Um, really a beautiful bird. Let's go over here to the reddish egret. I was over in, uh, in Cape Canaveral, there's a, uh, a piece of property called the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and uh, we were there and saw this uh, egret waiting for food um, and really beautiful bird. Let's go over here to the African gray parrot. One of the amazing things about parrots is their intelligence. This guy has roughly the intelligence of a five-year-old child and uh, as a result can do things like mimicking human speech with uh, remarkable accuracy and that's good and bad news. It's good news if you love a, a really great pet like the Congo African Grey. It's bad news if you're the parrot himself because um, uh, these guys are being hunted nearly to extinction in the wild um, and a lot of them um, uh, don't even make it to market because of the way they're harvested. But really amazing creatures. Um, very smart birds. Let's go next to the yellow crested cockatoo. Can you believe that crest? That's a, just an amazing color. And notice that pale yellow on his cheeks. That's what tells you that this is the yellow crested cockatoo, uh, not a sulfur crested cockatoo. The yellow crested cockatoo is, this bird you're looking at, is nearly extinct. Uh, less than a thousand of them remain in the world and again a victim of the uh, pet bird trade market. Let's go over here to the tricolored heron. Um, tricolored, as you can see, a uh, uh, very colorful bird. Again, this bird uh, at Cape Canaveral looking to see where his next meal is coming from. And then on over here to the double barred finch. Uh, I was in uh, Butterfly World, actually, at Coconut Creek in Florida, uh, watching this uh, double barred finch uh, get his bearings there. Very interesting bird. You see that disc-like uh, appearance around his eyes gives him the nickname Owl Finch, for obvious reasons. And then over here to the white ibis pear. Again, these birds are uh, were grazing for food uh, uh, on Cape Canaveral property. So an interesting about these birds, they, you see them um, uh, scanning the water uh, with their bills, but they cannot actually see what they're doing. They do it all by tactile sensation. 
and uh, as a result they stir up a lot of food that they can't eat and you see other species following closely behind them uh, eating what they can't see. So they can see each other but they can't see what they're eating. Let's go over here to the superb starling and he uh, has bitten off a little bit more than he can chew landing on this very thin branch which caused the branch to bob up and down wildly and he's uh, extended his left wing to try to stabilize himself here but he's really hilarious as he uh, uh, nonchalantly keeps himself uh, on this roller coaster ride. And then over here to Fisher's Lovebird, obviously another uh, member of the parrot family. This one, a very small bird, very colorful, a very playful creature. These guys need incredible amounts of attention to keep from getting bored. And um, as a result, if they're, if they're uh, hand-fed and raised from a young age uh, by humans, they make great pets. Um, uh, and fortunately, this one is only near endangered uh, because of the uh, pet bird market. Over here to the Venezuelan uh, trupial portrait. Uh, turns out this is the national bird of Venezuela and another nest pirate. Uh, they don't build their own nest. They either find a vacant nest or they dive in and uh, drive off anybody uh, that has their own nest, sometimes violently, and take over the neighborhood. Um, but a pretty bird nevertheless. Here we are again on the superb starling. This in a portrait uh, uh, profile that you see here. And um, you know, they, they are very cooperative birds. They, they, um, if, if the species needs help in their area, they'll help raise other families' birds. And um, uh, they'll even um, feed the birds of other families and, and do whatever it takes for the species to survive in their area. Over here now to the Chilean flamingo. This guy is actually, believe it or not, uh, feeding uh, in this picture. He's actually, his, his beak contains a comb-like structure and he is, as you see him here, filtering algae in this water, which is his primary source of food. And um, of course, it's again that color uh, which he gets from the food he eats that uh, makes the, the flamingo so notable. And then over here, I uh, managed to get very close to this white-crested laughing thrush. Um, they're, again, cooperative breeders that uh, help raise other birds in the neighborhood if they need to. Um, very fluffy plumage, as you can see here. And um, uh, a real helper attitude. They're a community bird. Over to flamingos, uh, excuse me, over to female Anna's hummingbird. Um, we were eating um, a nice outdoor meal in Squim, uh, Washington State, when uh, this bird um, flew up and, and decided to eat his own meal uh, nearby. And of course, he's doing that by uh, feeding off of the nectar of this flower. These hummingbirds, as you may know, are just incredibly nimble. This guy can flap his wings. Um, 55 times a second um, to, to just shake off dirt or, or water as needed. Over here to the white-faced whistling duck. Really a misnomer. This guy is not a duck at all. He's a goose. And um, he has um, uh, a penchant for uh, pair bonding and highly social behavior. Um, but if he needs to, um, although they hunt primarily at night, they will also uh, dive on a predator. Um, and that's, that behavior is, is uh, unheard of uh, in ducks. So this guy is kind of a, kind of a, a very unusual bird to be called a duck. <laughs> All right, let's go over here to the great egret waiting. Again, these egrets are fascinating when you watch them hunting for their food. They, they will just strike the water with incredible speed and precision, rarely missing um, uh, their meal, whether it be crayfish or small fish or insects or whatever. 
uh, you can't even see that they're seeing their meal, but uh, they see it and they strike it very rapidly with incredible precision. And obviously, very beautiful plumage on that bird. It's an amazing thing about these birds. Many of these species have been driven to extinction nearly um, down to just a couple of dozen surviving breeding pairs worldwide. Um, that happened once in the late 1890s because of the women's hat craze where people wanted the plumage of these birds in women's hats, uh, drove them to near extinction. And then again, um, shortly after World War II, when DDT became widely used as a pesticide, um, it caused the thinning of the eggs of many of these um, egrets and herons and other birds that produce this gorgeous plumage. Uh, and drove them again down to just a couple of dozen surviving nesting pairs in the world. And yet in both cases they were able to recover from a couple of dozen breeding pairs to, uh, to hundreds of thousands of birds uh, and, and become uh, not endangered anymore. So it's, it's incredible what these birds can do if um, we bring some attention and protection to their cause. Then over here to this bald eagle, of course, our national bird as well as our national animal. And um, it's, you actually have to have a permit to keep um, bald eagles uh, in captivity. This one was granted a permit because of a permanent injury, which is the typical reason. Again, a bird that was driven to near extinction and then brought completely back to non-endangered status by a little bit of attention and uh, protection and understanding um, of their plight. Then over here to the golden pheasant, sometimes called the Chinese pheasant, just an incredibly colorful bird as you can see. Uh, <clears throat> bright red body orange and blue striped cape there. Um, <coughs> And um, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, these birds um, come, these birds that show a, a lot of difference in species that come from different parts of the world. This bird from China is, is less like most of the birds that you've seen, uh, but we're going to talk about where these birds come from, from all over our planet, um, and the fascinating variety of the species. There are over 10,000 species of birds um, and the variety among them is astounding. Back to the Guaira Cuckoo. Again, we talked about this rascal earlier and the fact that um, he will sneak up on other people's nests, lay his eggs in them and expect them to raise them while he goes and um, goes on to the next nest. He's a real, he's, a, he's got a lot of attitude as you can see probably use a little bit too much gel in that hair there, but uh, remarkable bird. On over to the Bally Mina. Again, one of those birds that uh, is in a phase of near extinction at this point. Um, the bird you're looking at here is, is uh, one of less than a thousand that survive on this planet today. And uh, there are well under a hundred of them left in the wild in their native uh, Indonesia. Uh, of course they uh, only live uh, natively in Bali, Indonesia, which is where they get their name from. A beautiful bird and we hope that uh, some of the protections that have brought these species back from near extinction, which is the status of this bird, can help the Bali Mina recover. We're going to go ahead and take a walk across the hall now and take a look at some more of these birds. The bird that we're going to be coming up on first uh, is one of the birds that we encountered at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Preserve on Cape Canaveral property. Again, a tricolored heron here taking flight and uh, breeding season is approaching and during breeding season to attract the attention of mates, these birds change colors. And if you take a look at his bill, it's in the process of turning blue for breeding, breeding season. 
on over here to the mast lapwing. What an interesting bird. Take a look at these spurs there on his um, on the carpal area of his wings, which he can use to defend himself if necessary. Here he is uh, flapping his wings. Then on over to the great egret couple. We uh, encountered this couple in Port Royal, South Carolina. If you take a look closely at the bottom of the picture, you can see that they are raising young great egrets. And in this case, um, they build tree nests in colonies close to the water to raise their young. On over here to the white-headed buffalo weaver. This is the architect of the bird world, the white-headed buffalo weaver. Uh, interesting, you can see the white-headed part. The buffalo part comes from the fact that they follow uh, African buffalo around in their native Africa and eat the insects that the buffalo stir up as they're wandering around. And the weaver part, you can see, he is actually weaving a nest, although a weaving is a misnomer here. He doesn't actually weave a nest. He stuffs that nest in a very architecturally uh, elaborate way nest construction consisting of several rooms, uh, very soundly engineered and just an incredible job as a nest builder. Unfortunately that means that other birds frequently admire his work so much that they take over the nest that he's built. Now on to the snowy egret. What an elegant and graceful bird here seemingly staring at his reflection but actually uh, this bird spends more time running through the water with his wings spread to provide shelter from the sun so that he can actually see what it is that he's hunting. Here's another Fisher's love bird tilted. What a cute bird. Again, these are the clowns of the bird world. These guys love to entertain people uh, if they're around people. Otherwise, they will clown it up with their own species. And as a result, they provide a lot of entertainment and demand a lot of attention. If they don't get the attention, they get bored and, and start plucking their own feathers out. Over to the white ibis. Again, what an elegant bird. Um, again, on Merritt Island property, doing some hunting and using that down curve bill uh, when necessary to feel, feel around for his food. Um, again, the ibises don't see what it is that they're eating. They just use that long bill to, to feel it out tactily. Over here now to the great blue heron. Herons are smart birds in that they don't go out hunting for their food. They just perch here like this and wait for it to come to them. So this guy is actually waiting for a meal to arrive within uh, eyesight. And then when he sees it... <coughs> He'll shake himself off that perch and go get it. Really amazing birds, and you'll see the great blue uh, all over the United States uh, if you're lucky in, um, in wild and protected areas. Now we go over to the roller family. The roller, obviously, a very colorful bird. And <clears throat> the rollers get their names from actually rolling uh, during... Um, fainting or actual attack runs on birds that are threatening their nest. So if they see a threat, they will actually uh, elevate to um, an altitude that uh, the, uh, the other bird can't see and then do a rolling, rocking dive, uh, calling out loudly and pulling up at the last second to scare off any intruders and that unique roll in their dive like a plane rocking its wings violently gives the rollers their name. <clears throat> Again the scarlet ibis that incredible luminescent orange red color very uh, elegant bird. This is the national bird of the country of Trinidad and Tobago specifically representing uh, the island of Trinidad in the case of the scarlet Ibis. Over here to the tricolored heron. When he's not flying low over the marshes like you see him doing here, 
he stalks his prey, um, uh, and you can see him doing these unusual running motions. He will actually run rapidly through the water as he stalks his prey, sometimes with his wings held high. Now over to uh, the white-headed buffalo weaver close-up. We saw uh, this nest builder earlier on. This is showing you a little bit more uh, of the detail uh, in that feathering. And then the uh, green wood hoopo is a uh, tropical bird native of sub-Saharan Africa. This is a very strange bird. You can, sit, you can get, begin to get the idea of where the expression strange bird comes from. This guy, it, rather like wolves, hunts in close-knit groups headed by a dominant pair. And when neighboring groups meet, each group engages in what's called a flag-waving display. So they will get a chip of bark or whatever it may be that represents the flag of the group. And then they, be, they form this group identity and the groups rock and their bodies and call out when a member of the group waves the flag. Um, so that's a very, very strange behavior. The, the green wood hoopo. This is a hammer cop. You can see with his bill tucked into his body. Um, these guys are incredibly, um, I, I would say they almost overdo it when they build their nest. Their nests uh, uh, typically are massive with over 10,000 sticks and can support the weight of a 300 pound man. So why they build a nest like that uh, is beyond me again. Um, they often join in these strange ceremonies with up to ten other hammer cops running in circles around each other, calling loudly and raising their crests. Here is a night hunter, as you might imagine, the Milky Eagle Owl. This guy has incredible vision and incredible sense of smell and incredible hearing. He is an awesome hunter. This guy can hear a mouse's heartbeat from 10 feet away and he can see in near pitch black but that incredible uh, vision costs him because it fills up most of that cranium leaving very little for intelligence so not a very smart bird but an incredible hunter the milky eagle owl and here is the colorful roseate spoonbill uh, the spoonbill um, uh, Again, is one of these birds that uh, fell victim, as you might imagine, to that plumage craze. Um, people wanted that roseate color in their hats and drove the bird to near extinction. Uh, protections introduced in the 1940s have now caused a complete recovery for this bird. is no longer endangered. Over to our rascal Guaira cuckoos, this time hanging out in a pair and um, probably looking for another um, nest to raid. Uh, these guys are just incredible. Uh, you can't keep, their, keep, keep your eye off of them for a moment, otherwise they will stir up trouble. Over here to the rainbow lorikeet pair. Lorikeets are a very popular um, and, and pretty common parrot. They love to groom each other, as you can see. And um, they're they're very um, they're very affectionate. Uh, they eat almost entirely uh, nectar, which their tongue is is optimized to extract. And um, they uh, love to hang around people. And will uh, if you've got some nectar, they'll be all over you and um, uh, and having a good time. And you'll be having a good time while they're doing it. Here is that uh, roller again, looking skyward. Rather magnificent bird with that turquoise coloring. And here we are finally at the white-cheeked turaco. And this is a close-up of that bird. Some of the amazing coloring you're seeing there comes from the unusual fact that these birds uh, have a very high copper content in their diet. Uh, copper content that would kill most birds and some humans. Uh, the turacos thrive on and it helps give them the richness uh, of that color um, and um, they 
they have a, um, a rather excited dynamic behavior which, um, which people find entertaining and delightful. So that's a little bit of uh, what we would like to call birds up close. I'm hoping that this gave you a feel for uh, a little bit of what a bird really looks like up close and some of the amazing behaviors that you may not have known about if you didn't get up close to, to some of those as well. So the next time you're, you're looking at a bird in the distance, uh, you might think about uh, what you've seen here today and uh, what a bird really looks like up close and some of the amazing diversity in birds around the world and some of the amazing behaviors that they display. Uh, again, if you want to see these birds uh, in more detail, go to uh, Saatchi Art, S-A-A-T-C-H-I-A-R-T dot com slash Phil Zenner. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.